Greetings, I'm Demonac, and it's Civilization Time. So I'm going to be starting a series of Civilization Beyond Earth here. And I have played a few times through, I played one full game, and I've played it a fair ways through several times, so I'm starting to get a good feel for it, I think. At least I almost know what I'm doing. I'm going to set the map to standard size, because I did it on a small once and I did not like it. Difficulty is the second hardest, uh, because I beat it on one of the easier difficulties and the AI was not all that difficult, let's say. So the rest of this stuff we'll we'll go through choosing the uh, sponsor here. So the sponsor, you could call it your civilization here, so they have a unique power. But after this, I get to pick a whole bunch more things about what I'm going to start with, and it makes a big difference in the game, which is pretty cool. So let's see, I could take faster spy, like better spying, better workers, and a little bit of bonus production towards wonders. Franco Iberia, I think, may be the best one, because they give you two free techs, probably two free techs over the course of the game, I don't know, maybe three. But uh, it takes a fair while to get the second one for sure, but either way, you are you can get really expensive techs much cheaper in this route, especially if you plan for it. Slavic Federation, they get one free tech, probably very early in the game, which... Is okay, I guess. The orbital units staying in orbit 20% longer. I don't know how important that really is. I don't feel like that's very good. They seem like a crappy version of Franco Iberia. Then we have Polystrasia gets two extra trade routes in their capital. I mean, every, cities normally get two trade routes. You can add another one in at least one other way, but that's two is a lot of trade routes. And I'm thinking for the capital, I'm thinking I'm going to take Polystrasia this game because that can provide a lot of benefits as long as I've got enough places to trade with, and internal trade routes can give you a lot of production and food. If I go to build a wonder, I could hopefully get a whole bunch of the trade routes set to internal ones that are going to ferry a ton of production back to the capital and boost that. The uh, the KP here, their cities and outposts acquire new tiles faster, so that really helps if they want to expand a lot. I don't know how it's going to go for me. Brasilia has plus 10% melee strength, which is you know, strong if you want to smash people, but I'm not doing that. African Union is tempting. I mean, they get plus 10% food in cities as long as they're healthy. You have to really work on keeping enough health to keep your whole civilization growing with these guys. But and that's so more people is good. But I mean, I'm going to go with Polystrasia, something I haven't tried yet. So I'm going to choose a bonus that I'm going to get in every city. So we can have plus two science, food, production, or three energy and one health, or two culture and one health. And I really like two, the culture and health, because the culture helps you get the virtues early on. It also helps your borders expand faster. And health is, you know, it, it's harder to get a point of health than it is to get a point of production or food or whatever. So we're going to go with that one. We choose our spacecraft, so we could see the outline of the continents, we could see where all the the hidden resources are without researching the text, which does mean you don't have to research the geothermal tech unless you actually have geothermals near your cities. I usually don't research it anyway, because it's probably because I'm an idiot, but 100 energy, that, I mean, if you're going to be losing energy, I guess this would be a big amount to help offset that, but I don't feel like it's really that great. I think the be best one is probably the retrograde thrusters, which gives you a much better choice of where your starting city is, and even if you put your starting city dead in the middle of the place it would have given you anyway, you can see a whole area around it, which does not hurt for your planning purposes. And the cargo, the, starting with an extra population is pretty sweet, but I think Quill18 made a very good argument that the worker is going to get you that extra population faster because you're going to be working better tiles. It, the, the worker also saves me building a worker, so this is all kinds of goodness. You could also start with a technology that you really need to expand, or the clinic, but no, I'm going to take the machinery. I like that. So let's get started. I could have also uh, selected the world type. It's going to default to a Terran world. So, yep, yeah, here we are. I have, of course, I have music turned off because I am a little worried about copyright strikes. My giant head here, which I'm going to move, I think about there is not going to block anything too much. 
could be wrong. Yeah, I really like Civ Beyond Earth so far because it gives you just like a lot more choices, I feel like, than you get in Civ 5, which you can really see from the tech tree. But even there, there are all kinds of little quests sort of things. So this, I can see this whole huge area here and figure out where I want to go. There's lots of floatstone if I go down this way. Floatstone, uh, Xenomass, and there's one other are the the main strategic resources that you use depending on which uh, which direction you want to go with your civilization. You're going to need those for military power later on. Looks like I might be going purity and get all this floatstone. So I could settle down here. If I put a city here, it would get access to... Um, six of the floatstone anyway, not not like a huge mass of it, but how much is over here? Yeah, not that much. So still six floatstone, not too bad. And it's got tubers, one, two, three. It doesn't quite get that xenomass or the fungus. But we get this chitin and resolin. Resolin's really good, but I think maybe I'm going to want another city down there. So maybe if I go more in this direction, I still get... One, two, three. I still get both of those. I'd miss out on the chitin. I I pronounce it chitin for no good reason. I know it's actually chitin. But I'd also get this... Uh, I get two fungus. If I'm over. Oh, no, I still wouldn't get that fungus, even from being all the way over here. There's no benefit to rivers that I know of in this game. I mean, the river adds energy to the tiles around it, but actually settling on a river doesn't seem to do anything the way it does in Civ Five. Now, if I did make my city over here, I would get Xenomass instead, which I'd rather have the Floatstone, but it's not going to matter for a fair ways into the game. But there are a million tubers. I could get so much food production if I start my city over here. So maybe that's actually what I should do. Try and have, like, giant hyper city. Now, there are more mountains and canyons over here, which are dead tiles. But putting a city here in the middle between... uh no, I'd really want it to be more here so I could get this Xenomass in the same city. But still, it would rapidly block off this area with all these canyons. So it would be hard to come at from certain angles. Maybe I should do that. That's, that is a lot of tubers. Like, these things are, get plus two food when upgrade... Oh, it's so, so much food I could get from those. And I'd have the Xenomass in range, and... All that good stuff. There's a bunch of miasma. That's not going to cause huge problems, I don't think. And start building cities down here to get that stuff. Okay. I've convinced myself I'll stop talking and start doing... Let's drop a city here. It also seems to be getting a lot of energy from the river and maybe the mountains and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. So I've got my... Remember I said I was going to start with a worker. I've got that. He's awesome. Now, it's telling me to upgrade this to a mine to get more production, which seems, frankly, kind of stupid, because I could be upgrading the tubers and growing my city way faster. Like, that's not even a good square. Stupid advisor. Okay, and I've got a scout. Got to send him out and see what he can find in the world. Uh, I'm going to see if I can loop around to this resource pod, which may, may not be possible. There are a lot of resource pods in range of my, my thruster scouting here. Right, there's one down there... One down at wow. They're like all over the place. Now, I start first as the player. I don't know how many... Uh, well, I don't know where the enemy civilizations are going to spawn, but they're going to spawn after me. I like how you can zoom out from your tech map to the screen that shows you no information whatsoever. They couldn't just put, like, on each of these things how many turns it would take to research. Or the... Uh, Affinities, which are very, very important. And if it put down, if it showed this tech has this has supremacy, this tech has harmony, if it showed that on the big screen, that would be useful information. But instead it shows nothing. And actually mine is showing way more than it would normally because I have a mod called, like, Colorful Tech Web or something like that. So, because otherwise everything looks white and it would be hard to tell the difference between a building and a wonder. Like, really, they, they look pretty much the same. Oops, that clicked on genetics. We're not doing that. We are going to research... There's so many good city spots nearby, I'm wondering if I should almost go pioneering first. But I should probably research chemistry, because it gives me some really important buildings. 
And th then we'll go to pioneering, I'm sure. Choose production in my city. And we are going to build the old earth relic because it'll help us expand our borders faster. Or and the clinic would give me more science. It takes a while to build. You know what? There's so much space around here. I might actually just build an extra explorer first. See what I can milk out of all this stuff. But I'm sure I'll have a use for him. Okay, so there's South El America. Pueblo Nido de Sud America le da la bienvenida. They have landed down there already. There's not really much to talk to them about yet. They won't make like peace treaties or something because they haven't even known you yet. So he's a good distance away. I'm not worried about him right now. We are going to put a plantation so we can get so, so much food from those tubers. Like, this city is going to farm like crazy. It's prioritizing the Xenomass because it's an idiot. You can't, you can't upgrade the strategic resources until at least a couple of techs later because they're going to be more expensive. But Okay, so this guy, he took a little damage because he started his turn on Miasma. It's kind of like the fungus from Alpha Centauri. If you don't know, this game is the spiritual successor to Sid Meier's Alpha Centauri. I got 50 energy there. Yeah, they, they couldn't use the name Alpha Centauri because it was owned by somebody else. We're going to hope those bugs don't blow up my scout. Usually bugs aren't too aggressive early in the game, especially if you don't smash them. Okay, I've got a quest to get more resource pods, and if I get another two resource pods, it will actually uh, give me about 60 research, I think. So that'll be good. The bugs, yeah, the bugs tend not to be too aggressive unless you're near one of their nests, which is not helpful. Or if you, uh, if you attack them, obviously. Because there's a bug there and there's so many resource pods around, I'd like to just go to them. I'd kind of like to go through here if possible, but their canyon does go down that way. Maybe I should actually loop back through my place. Oh, there's I can a derelict settlement. I can do an expedition there. I might get plus one population or something. So that's a system we're going to find out about quickly. The uh, is there a miasma there? No. Awesome. More bugs. They should be fine. A resource pod right there. I should grab that before I start my expedition. I guess. Although it's going to set it back a turn. So scouts. In it, mo there are these resource pods that are just like the old goody huts you get some stuff from them. Usually not quite as big as these expedition type ones. Although this just gave me a free solar collector satellite, which is awesome. But, yeah, you can get much bigger stuff from these these ones that I, like the derelict settlement here, where you have to found an expedition, which means your explorer needs to spend a bunch of turns, like five or ten turns, digging out the place and finding where all the good stuff is. Plus, every time they do that, they have to come back to their city to replenish their expedition module, unless they, unless you have text that let them carry more than one. Okay, so we've got the satellite. We're going to hold on to that, because it increases the out, the energy output from my city and from, a, from all the tiles that are under it. But, of course, I have only one worker right now, so I'm not going to get anywhere near as much from that as if I wait till I have a population of three or more. It's usually what I wait for. That thing is good, though. There's so much to this game, I can't explain it all at once. I'm just going to try and gradually get to things as I go along. So, quest upgrade, research pioneering. Okay, that's that's basically a quest chain to found your first outpost, which is totally reasonable and should definitely do it, because if you only have one city, you're not going to do too well. It's going to take ten turns for this expedition. It better be good. Meanwhile, my city has grown. I can now be working two tiles. And they're prioritizing this energy, whereas I could be getting more production. I don't need that energy as much right now. It is going to go to tubers next, so that's okay, I guess. Let's get that... Uh, how long does it take? Board, seven turns till border growth? Yeah. The uh, I'm going to get the old earth relic anyhow, because... Virtues, the the uh, virtues, the new form of social policies that you get are really good, and the more you get, the more synergy bonuses you can grab. So, I do want to get that culture going pretty quickly. The temple doors of the protectorate are open. Okay, so the KP has uh, spawned down there.
Did I not build that explorer? I didn't finish him. Oh, I didn't have the queue on. It defaults to only one thing produced at a time instead of a queue. Uh, that's stupid. I was like, where's my explorer? I wanted an explorer, damn it. Okay, we're going to get a virtue soon. Fan Ya Hezu, Guang Zong Yao Zu. Guang Zong Yao Zu to you too. So we've got the Pan Asian Cooperative down there. I hope that my poor pronunciation, attempting to reflect what she said, didn't come out as something offensive. But I get a virtue now, and we get to see there are all these great virtues. The the first one in each category is awesome. And then as you go down, you can get more bonuses for going deep down one category. You can also get more bonuses for going broad and taking a whole bunch of level one things. You can get an extra virtue. I almost always do that, because... Six level ones will get me one free virtue, and there's a lot of good stuff in the level ones. But there's also great bonuses. You can get free virtue and a free covert agent if you get six, uh, or, I don't know, seven or eight of the level twos. And up to the point where if you get whatever it is, like eight or ten or something of the top level ones, you get 10% everything in every city. It's kind of insane. But just going down knowledge, I can get 10% culture in every city, and then 10% science, industry, 10% energy, and then production. I'm going to start out with, uh, yeah, it's so hard because rushing this thing is good for the expeditions. I'm not going to get it before I finish that one expedition. There may be a bunch more. I kind of like the uh, the growth one, too. Even though I don't like this tree as much, I kind of like grabbing that and then going into this. But this is 10% production towards buildings. That is pretty spiffy as well. Oh, I, it's always a crap tube. Uh, I'm going to take the knowledge one first, I guess. Why not? Because then if it looks like I'm going to get more expeditions, I can maybe grab the field research. Okay. So you have finished there. Now I'm making super food. Super mega ultra atomic food. I'm going to be getting this tile in five more turns. i got to do something in the meantime, so let's head down here and drop a farm on that. Since I'm working that tile for the production anyway. Bloop. I can see that this city is kind of low in production, is why it's trying to encourage me to put a mine there, but... Bleh. Tile with no food? That's no good. Quest decision. Okay. So, I'm just getting a bit of a starter quest here. I'm not going to read all of these because it's going to take too long. But we got to decide how we're going to deal with the, the wildlife around here. We can try and domesticate it or eradicate it. And this will affect, this will give us some points towards one of the affinities. Um, I want to be supremacy, but there's none of the supremacy resource over here. Because supremacy is the correct affinity, right? These are all like a philosophy on how you want to make your society, and the correct one is supremacy, in case you were wondering. But I guess we're going to go purity, because we've got all that floatstone, hopefully, and I really, I find, I'm not a big fan of the stuff you get from Harmony. I don't, I don't see the purpose of trying to exist harmoniously with the life forms. Although, I do try and have sort of like a non-aggression policy towards the bugs. I'm not interested in trying to kill them all. It's a waste of time. It's unproductive. If you don't fight with them, that usually works out okay. So there is this resource pod down here, that one there, but I could also just go and do this expedition, which is super valuable too. I, I'll get this pod and then get the expedition. That's what we'll do. Firebase 1. So this is a station, this is kind of just like a neutral colony, it's just there to trade with, basically. Sputnik, Slavenska Federacja pozdrawia je tibia. Sputnik to you too, Slavic guy. Very fond of his spaceships, his orbital bonus. We now have three units of population here. If they're all working stuff close together... Now, I think we're actually going to end up working over in, more in this direction. So I'll get more tiles worked. I'm going to drop that satellite and show you. These satellites can do a whole bunch of different things. This is the radius around my city where I can put a satellite. If I had multiple cities, if I had another one over here, I could launch it anywhere in this city's radius or anywhere in the other city's radius. 
The only thing about satellites is that they can't overlap in their areas. So when I select this one, I'm going to have to zoom in to get it clicked on. Yeah, I can put it. This one has this little area where it's boosting the energy collection. And it can't overlap with another satellite. And if part of it is touching the city, the city will also get 20% total energy production increase. Which, the reason it's like that is that, I mean, there's a research kind of satellite, there's a food kind of satellite, all these things. You can only have one of them covering the city because they're not allowed to overlap. So that's why there's a big bonus for which one you put over the city. But I'm not going to have any satellites for a long time. This one's probably going to fall out of the sky before I build any new satellites. So I'm definitely going to make sure it's on the city to get that 20% bonus. And get out of the orbital layer. Now we should see... Yeah, my, my worker automatically changed from this tile to the identical one over here that is now getting boosted. So we're going to be making money a lot faster. That's good. And I can upgrade those tubers next. Awesome stuff. So this guy is still heading over. Scouts ignore uh, the, the movement penalties for terrain, which is nice. Don't seem to be a lot of bugs right near me, which is actually kind of nice too. Because they're not normally very aggressive, but they do attack. Like, they don't tend to mess with... The African people greet you. Uh, greetings to you too. The aliens don't tend to mess with even your scouts, usually. Unless you tick them off somehow. So I get 15 science. That, I think, is the quest for checking out research pods. But the pod itself also had 19 science, so... That's going to that's gonna be pretty close to a starter attack, right? I'm only two turns away from chemistry now. Nice. Chemistry will show me where all the petroleum is, which is a valuable resource basically just for satellites. But it kind of makes sense because it's, much, it's hard to get that kind of concentrated power to blow something off the planet into space. We have all these more advanced techniques for energy, but are they going to be as concentrate, concentrated? Like... We have nuclear power now. We don't use nuclear engines for the Starcraft, for the Starships. It's still easier to ex have a giant controlled explosion out of petroleum products. So, okay. Yeah, he his next job is to go over and upgrade the tubers for even more super ultra mega growth, basically. And hopefully this expedition is going to end soon so we can see what comes out of that. And it did, and he increased the population of the city by one from that derelict settlement. Sweet. We do like the population. I may not like people that much in real life, but they're good in civilization. Of resources shared among a handful of people. We're going to make a fortune here. Yes, we are, if we have any petroleum, but we probably don't. I never get petroleum. So I research. Well, there's petroleum way the hell over there. Whoop-dee-doo. Nothing in my giant area of interest here. <clears throat> okay, so... Oh, we got a new virtue, though. Uh, I am going to be finishing another expedition soon. I guess I'll put this in. It'll give me 30 for each one. It's too bad I missed the first one. I almost should have moved that guy off it. I didn't realize how close that was. Yeah, I should have moved him off for one... Or just stopped him for one turn and then started him again. So I've cost myself 30 research by not gaming the system. Whoopsie. Let's see. Oh, there's a coast over there. That's good to know. You are tuberizing, because I love me some tubers. And you are going to get started on this expedition. And there's coast over there, too. Ah, I might have my own private little super area here. These guys all appear to be on another continent from me. Of course, there are still some other civs to land, I think. Are there? Or, or is that everyone? One, two, three... Four, five, six. Huh. If they've all landed, I might actually have this giant area to myself. I don't know if I've got a seventh one coming or not on this difficulty. Yeah, you should definitely construct an expedition. That's a, no, that's a five turn one. That's not as bad. Gotta kind of move around this stupid canyon. Canyons do look cool, though. It's more interesting than it all being mountains to block them. Is an alien world after all. So you can choose production. Let's get on the mountain there. Ah, more resource pods. We like free resources. 
And okay, city so needs to build something. I can't build a new colony yet, which I'm actually tempted to do as early as possible. I don't have any soldiers. That's probably bad, but again, there aren't a lot of aliens near me, and they're not they're not like the barbarians in Civ. I haven't taken them off, and they don't have any nests near me. They're not going to come for me. So I really don't have much to worry about, most likely. It's not a guarantee, but they really they aren't going to just keep swarming until they find my city. They don't work that way. But there are some things that might come for me. Anyhow, uh, the recycler is the best thing here. It's going to boost my production a bunch. We're going to work on that. Actually, how much... Hold on a sec. Let's get in this city. I hate that there's a different... The, the choose production thing doesn't take you into the city. Like, I don't even have the purchase option there. Clinic costs 270 The recycler costs 320 But... I want the recycler first, and I will probably get it faster by buying it anyway. So I'm actually just going to start working on the clinic, which does give a little bit of science. I don't need the health so much, but... The science is good. I'm going to need the health eventually anyway. Cause actually, I should need the health because I'm, I've got the city of tubers here. It's just going to grow like crazy. It's like free tuber land. So yeah, that health is actually going to come in handy. And then I'll buy the, uh, the recycling system for extra production before I could have finished either one of them. 20 bonus culture. Amazing. That means I'm going to get a new virtue almost right away. Into the continent there. So this re this is on miasma that expedition. I got to watch their health because it is going to go down by ten percent every turn. Like their health is a hundred, it's going to go down by ten. It did Venez drop some of it. Franco Iberia vous accueille chaleureusement. Yeah, bonjour Franco Iberia. Uh, my my French is a little rusty, but I think the appropriate greeting is. Nous vous tuerez parce que vous êtes trop frais. That's probably not the right word. Something about something about killing you because you're too close to my city. But anyhow, we'll keep exploring. In the spirit of friendship or something. Everyone else is so far away, I probably can't even trade with them. So having someone to trade with is good. And you know, we don't actually have to conflict necessarily. I mostly wanted to build down here. I don't think that's changed horribly, although there are some good city spots up here, too. But maybe we can coexist peacefully. It's just not, like, really, really cramping my style. Um, 10% production towards buildings would be handy. And this is one where get, I can get health for trade units if I go down there. So the energy... oh, man. I, I really love, would like to stick a point in frugality to have my city grow faster. And it, that retaining 10% of the food after every growth is going to add up because I'm going to grow. I'm growing super fast because of all my tubers. But on the other hand, being being able to make all these buildings faster would also be good. I'll probably grab both of those. Ah, it's so hard. Okay, how close are we to growing? We're going to grow in three turns. We're we're growing fast. I'm going to grab the uh, the food one. I might not take anything else in this tree because I don't like it too much. Like I get a, a free worker, that's great, but that's like spending a virtue on a one-time thing. And I've already got this one, which is like sort of an early game thing. Later in the game, I'm probably not going to get many more expeditions. It's only good for maybe three to five usually. Then this thing. I mean, it takes a few less turns to make a city. That's not a big deal. You can get a free colonist, which is good, because your cities don't grow when you're building a colonist, but still, that and that, that's a lot of one-time things that you're getting. So, I don't know. I think we're going to go industry and knowledge, as per usual. The uh, There is lots of good stuff in the combat tree as well, just not necessarily stuff that helps you grow early on. You have to get sort of into the middle of the tree before it starts wrapping around into your fighting is so good that it's helping you grow. So I got bonus culture from that expedition. Super mega ultra culture. I do like it. Okay. There's some Phyraxite. There's, I don't think we're going to see me changing to supremacy anytime soon. Although, the the affinities... Okay, so you have, the, you have that big tech tree, and it's awesome, right? Because you can... 
you can spread out. You can go wide. Like you get engineering and then robotics is 58. Like that's not that much longer than these little sub. These take a lot longer than the technology that gave them to you, right? These little leafs under here. You don't need to research those ever. You can keep going outwards through the graph, but a lot of your good stuff is in the leaves. You really, there are so many different ways you can go through this tree. In any given game, you're probably only researching, like, less than half of it. And you are going to get different stuff each time, depending on what you need. It's pretty awesome that way. There's so much choice in how you do it. But you don't get that much military power just from tech itself. Well, you really get your military, like, you get new unit types, but they're not that strong. What makes your unit strong is the affinities here. And you can have multiple affinities, but it's only your highest one that's really helping your military. So really you want to focus on one and pump it really high by researching technologies with that affinity. And you can get one or two points from quests and stuff. But you really want to pump up that one affinity that you're working on so that you can get both access to their custom units, but also all your units get their upgrades from affinities. And of course your custom units are to require the various special uh, resources like the Xenomass or the Floatstone. But okay, what am I doing? So I've got those tubers going. I can't do anything to the Xenomath without uh, tech. The tech for that is a little ways away, right? I'd actually need alien sciences up here. Right, that's sort of like a level 3 tech, and that's pretty much what you need for all of those resources. The terraforming, that's like a level 3 tech. That's even more, that's twice as expensive as alien sciences. And that's what I need for the floatstone. And then, yeah, robotics to get the get at the phyraxite. So really this, I don't, it prioritizes these really high when it's choosing what tiles to grow to. It's not really that useful yet. Uh, we're going to go down and improve this thing here, and... Normally I like to farm everything because I just want my city to go faster. This is the one time I actually can get so much food from this city that I think I'm going to boost the energy output of this tile. It's already a good energy tile. I'm going to throw down a generator there for another two. Two energy is considered by many people to be worth one production or one food, basically. And I normally value the food and production higher, but, you know, that money can be used to buy things. It's good. Speaking of which, I'll be able to buy my recycler pretty soon. I need to finish the... the oh, I'm two turns away from finishing my research on pioneering. I, then I'll be able to make my uh, my trading posts, the like the building I need to build trade convoys, and also I'll be able to build my first settlers, which I need to get another city. All very important stuff. The universe is either in progress or in entropy. We choose progress. Damn straight. It said two turns, but it finished right away. I guess my tech output went up. I don't know. So I'm not finding much down here. My guys were kind of running into each other, which is not very good. And this canyon is blocking him off. So I'm going to turn his ass around. I was talking to you and not paying attention to where he was going. This city has a lot of algae. Algae can do pretty good stuff later. Still has some floatstone. No, that's not a bad place for city, and it's coastal. My uh, my currency is not coastal, so maybe this is kind of where I should be looking for a city. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. It would give me an option if I wanted a little bit of fire axite to actually go supremacy. I always want to go supremacy. The, the, the affinities you have, the ones that you're choosing between... The one that I chose uh, something towards earlier was, uh, you know, we've got our quest to build a colony, that's fine. And we'll get, pick another tech. So, planetary survey would let me do aquatic, like, upgrades and embark my units, but I don't actually need that yet. So we'll hold off. Physics gives me an, a really good like combat unit, because the current units I have are not ranged. This guy is ranged, therefore better. But it, it doesn't really do anything else for me. It's kind of lame. Engineering would reveal titanium. Titanium I normally haven't had any use for in my previous playthroughs, but apparently you need it a lot more for the floatstone-related units, so maybe I should start looking at that. 
Computing would be awesome. It gives lots of good stuff, boats, artillery, and good buildings, but like that's 50 research. I'd be better off getting some of these other things first that are much cheaper that will maybe help me get towards that. No, I'm not picking physics. Engineering does give the thorium reactor, which would be a lot more energy. Again, energy is not my priority, is it? I could get a lot of health from taking genetics. And that might help offset my crazy growth from crazy growth city of crazy growth. So yeah, let's let's actually go genetics for now. And then I could actually get alien sciences sooner and be able to make use of that xenomass, even though I'm probably not going to go with Harmony. But yeah, the, the three affinities. So Harmony... Oh, sorry. This is another aside here. Every time you make a building for the first time, it gives you a quest decision that will affect every copy of that building that you make for the rest of the game. You can choose them differently every time. Some of them you're going to choose the same thing every time, but others you might actually choose different every game. In this case, unless I was really... Like, the two choices are all, my relics have no maintenance, so it's free, it just gives you two culture when you build them, or it could, this way it would still cost one maintenance every turn, it would give me three culture instead. The culture is worth way way more than one money most of the time, to me anyhow. So this is what I'm going to do. But say I was really short of money some game, I might choose to go the other way. Or maybe if I was planning on ex on fast expanding, building a ton of cities, I wouldn't want that extra cost adding up, even though it's only one per turn per monument. That's what they are, they like the monument from Civ Five. But uh, the affinities... Yeah, you have... The one I like, Supremacy. This is where the objective of your society is to just become better. You, you'll you use cybernetics, bionics, genetics, anything you can possibly mix and match to make your people better. And that just makes sense, right? That's what the future is all about. But there are some different philosophies you could take instead of that. There are the other affinities. First, I have to choose which station I want. So it's one of those neutral city things. It's going to show up somewhere entirely based on screwing me. And wherever I want a city the most, that's where they're going to put it, just to screw me, so that I have to, like, blow it up or something to get my city spot. Because you, just like a real city, you can't make it, make your own colony within three squares. But if it's not somewhere that screws me, I can trade with them, and that'll be good, because I have my extra trade routes from being polystrasia, right? So, this one is one energy and three culture. That's their thing. This one is four science. Culture is awesome, and I am grinding out culture like mad, but that's a lot of science. Man. Um, I think I'm actually going to pick the culture one. I know it seems weird, because it's not science, but you don't get culture from trade routes with other sieves, and you don't get culture from internal trade routes. So that's actually a much rarer resource, whereas you can get science from trading with other sieves. The drawback being that you're also giving them slightly less science but still bonus science. So it established this new Babylon thing where... Yeah, it's... I'm thinking I want to make a city like here, so it puts it there to screw me. You are an asshole. You're, you're just an asshole. I mean, I could leave it for now and make a city down here and then kill it later. There's still good places for cities down here, but... I don't know how it psychically knows where I'm going to put my city, but it will always, that, that quest will always put it in the dumbest possible place. It's a miracle of, like, artificial intelligence that the game is able to figure out the worst possible place for it. Daoming, you want to fight someone already. Look, I am not fighting anyone this early in the game, not to mention you're both too far away to matter right now. She's over there, he's farther, but, like, why are you... I, I'm not going to help you fight someone that I don't know very well right now. However, I do get another virtue here. So we could get the faster outpost growth and try and get a free colonist if we want to expand fast. I'd have to really watch my happiness, though, because my city is growing very fast on its own. And it's a fair ways down prosperity to get more health out of it, which is... That's good, just flat 7 health, but I'm not going that way. I could get... Bonus culture for every population, bonus knowledge, for, like science for every population, and then start getting these things that make future science and culture cheaper. 
which I really like. I'm going to want these production ones for when I get the cities going too, though. Uh, who, who am I to refuse more science and then more culture and then more science and then more culture? Uh, we'll probably do that. And I'll get 10% bonus culture in every city once I have up to 5 in here. Although, that's right, I do need to take... If I get two more level 1s, I will get a free virtue, which is pretty good. But I'll probably take this one first because it makes future virtues cheaper. Oh, so many choices. I'm not even sure how that maths out exactly because they get more expensive every time. So by taking that one, am I not just making everything else more expensive anyway? Like, is 10% going to be less than the cost of costing more than the previous virtue? It is not that easy to tell. Oh, this guy has used up his expedition module. I forgot about that. I should actually bring him back to my city, get him healed up. But also, like, he could heal in place in there, out there. It would just take longer. But I should bring him back to get his expedition module back, because otherwise I won't be able to exploit an expedition site if I find one. Actually, he should probably come down here and get this resource pod before uh, France gets it. They're probably going to get this stuff up there before I do. How may the corporation serve you? Okay, so the Americans have arrived. The American Reclamation Corporation. They like their money, and they like their spying. They're... <laughs> they're like... The NSA coupled with the Koch brothers. That that That's what the United States sent to represent them on the new planet. Thank you so much for that, USA. But anyhow. We're heading down here. we got more Phyraxites. Still, these are little, like, threes and stuff. They're not a big deal. Whereas this site has a lot of flowstone. Like, a six is nice. And it doesn't take too much of these strategic resources to get, like, the really the good special buildings that come with the affinities. But it takes a lot if you want to build the actual military units. They'll have, like, their first one. The first custom unit will take four points in an affinity, and it'll probably only take like one of one resource, like one xenomass, one phyraxite, whatever, per unit. But their later, what better ones are going to be like four or something, like ridiculous amounts of the resources. So he's got his expedition thingy back. This guy does not have an expedition thingy if he finds one. He'll still go hunting for resource pods, though. He needs to heal up, frankly. I want to clear out, or I want to check out around here in more detail because I do think I'm probably going to make a city here. I'll hold off on blowing up these a holes. Oh, that's right, I forgot to buy something, and it may have worked in my favor because instead of buying the recycler, which is awesome, I'm going to buy the trade depot, which is also going to give me production, but it's also what I need for trade routes, so I can start building trade convoys now. Um, I'm not going to be able to send a trade convoy to her, though. I have to explore the territory in between, and there has to be a path that's clear of my asthma, and it could get blown up by aliens. So, we're a little bit premature on the actual building those things. What I really need is a colonist to expand, but that's going to slow me down a lot, isn't it? My city development plans have left me a little bit shy of production, I will admit. Probably get the worker over here to actually upgrade that to a mine now, since there's not much production lying around. In the meantime, another worker? Not really. I might need a soldier to help her not get any ideas, but again, I don't think the AI is going to be that super aggressive yet. Although it's worth noting, the later they land, the more bonuses they get to offset the fact that they missed that time. So she started with more techs, she started with more and better military units probably than I have. So that's something to watch out for. Two turns to my clinic, and then what do I want? Laboratory would be more science, but I think the recycler is still probably the priority. More production is good. How much does it cost to buy a colonist? 640, that is a lot. I probably can't buy a colonist anytime soon. Ooh. Alright, yeah, let's get over there. Okay. It seems to be very easy to give the wrong commands to units. Like, you're giving a command to one unit and it ends up on another one like that. Like, I was trying to tell that guy to move through to here, and instead it moved him when I was not, I had not actually released the mouse button, 
and then it decided to move the next guy to where I was right-clicking, which was fortunately not out of his way. There's an alien nest guarding that xenomass, and if you're within two squares of the alien nest, they will attack you. So I'm going to get the heck away from there. Let's get this resource pod. It is a mountain that's blocking it off there and canyons and stuff for now. So, not too much excitement yet, which is good for me because excitement usually means problems. Hey, more bonus culture. I'm not complaining about bonus culture. That is an arranged alien there. Hopefully, it's not going to attack my guy. My guy's pretty weak. Yeah, we'll put a mine here. It will give go from one to three production, and we're at the point where it, it would make sense to work a tile that was giving three production and no food, because my city grows so fast. It is crazy. Uh, I don't know what I've been watching that would cause me to make that sound, but... Oh, there was, like... What the heck? I thought I told that guy to move away from there. I must have right-clicked something else that caused this guy to stick around, because I didn't get a chance to give him orders, and then he was stayed close to the nest and got killed. Oh, no, this is a different nest. They're all over the place down there. Awesome, that's good to know. One less explorer for me. So we'll try and keep this one alive, then. So, we've got basalt over there, which is good production. Very good production. A bunch of desert down here. There are some pretty impressive terrain improvements you can get. And through the tech tree, there are a lot of things that will passively increase them. So even if you're just building a lot of farms, if you research the right techs, the right leaves on the tech tree, or leaves, you can actually turn farms into these crazy tiles that make like three food, two energy, one research, one production in addition to whatever the actual terrain, like it's nuts the bonuses you can get. Okay, so that's ten floatstone, hold on, me and you have a new city location here. It's got more xenomass, it's blocking her from filling into my area slightly. Hold on, one, two, three, one, two, three. So this location would get all of that stuff, double fungus, double xenomass. The resolin, this is like, resolin is fantastic tiles. They give you production, and when you, up, and when you upgrade them, they give you, like, research. It's on a river. Awesome. The mega floatstone, regular floatstone. And I would actually both, get both of these silicas as well. This is a fantastic city site. That's where I'm going to build my damn city. Assuming I don't get swarmed by aliens before I get there. You go to war with the soldiers you have. Make sure those are the soldiers you want. Yep. Edit your soldiers. Increase their stats. So there is miasma on that floatstone. If I end my turn on it, my guy's going to take damage. And my guy's starting to get beat up, so we're, we'll try and avoid that. We can still get our resource pod. So what do we want... It's suggesting ecology here for culture, which would give me a food building, which also includes food from desert. And I think there's desert near my super city site. Plus, it gives you a technology. I could launch satellites that clear out miasma. That would be helpful because there's a lot of miasma. And the ultrasonic fence, which is, I consider, a sort of useless building, but you got to build one because the choice that you get from, like, the quest choice that it gives you after a while when you've had it out, lets you choose to make your convoys, all your trade units, immune to alien attacks, which is fantastic. It makes them way more useful and less dead. So that's very good. I could also gain a level of purity by researching genetic mapping. And actually, there's a pretty cheap wonder. It gives you plus four food, plus one culture, and 10% growth in all cities. Oh, that's... Man, it'd be crazy if I had that thing. But I think we're going to get the ecology first. We're not going to worry about that quite yet. I don't need planetary survey for a while. I don't think I'm going to need to mess with the ocean. Now, what have we got? Oh, it's still 640. I could buy a trade convoy, but I don't have a way to see whether I can reach that yet. 
Great route overview. Yeah. A available routes. Freeland. Oh, New Babylon. Okay, that's the uh, that trade station that I'm going to blow up later. I could send a trade route there and get culture. That's not really that exciting to me, honestly. So, I'm no, I don't need to rush that trade route yet, because again, I can't access Le Coeur yet. Uh, I really need to work on getting whatever I need to set up this colony as soon as possible. Hmm. So, recycler in seven turns. Could buy this, which you, plus one food from Marsh. I don't think helps me. Laboratory is cheaper. The recycler is going to be in seven turns. I should, it doesn't make a lot of sense to buy that. I should maybe just build a soldier to protect my stuff. Hate that. There is you get a free soldier from the quest to build a colony. Uh, you know what, after the recycler's done, I should probably just build the colonist. i got to watch to make sure it makes sense at the time. But that seems like the thing to do. And I just realized that I forgot to set my timer when I started this episode. So this was a super long first episode. They're normally probably going to be half an hour, if I remember. And we'll see how successful I am in setting up Super City next time. If you found that useful or entertaining, or if you enjoy cookies, hit the like button. And don't forget to subscribe to Demonet Games for more Hearthstone Arena and other gaming videos.